Hey everyone, Cody Hayes here, and I'd like to welcome you to part two as we look at forming ethics and logic along with some common logical or rhetorical fallacies. And this is where we left off. We left off with the fallacy, you know, were you there, which essentially is a fallacy that maintains unless you actually witness an event take place, you cannot say that it did take place. And then the next one, the ad hominem which basically is a character assassination that rather than attack somebody's argument, you attack something about his or her character. Another one, hasty generalization. And here's an example of that. I met three individuals with red hair. Each one was disrespectful towards me. Therefore, all individuals with red hair are disrespectful. I think the example given for hasty generalization is pretty cut and dry and explains it pretty well, but essentially, you know, rather than focusing on an individual, you basically look at a group of people that have a similar characteristics and say they're all the same such as you know whether that be you know a religious characteristic or a gender or a race or whatever it may be slippery slope a fallacy that's used quite often And here's an example of slippery slope. If we allow marijuana to be legal, then we'll have to allow heroin to be legal and cocaine to be legal. There's no stopping it. Essentially, the thing with the slippery slope is that it states that we're not conscious enough to know when to stop or intelligent enough to know when to stop. Um, you know, the example of the slippery slope comes up often when it does relate to issues of drug legalization, particularly marijuana being legal either for medical purposes or recreational purposes. Um, I remember when I was still uh, taking courses in computers and a student in the class that I was in brought up about how, you know, he felt marijuana should be legal. And the instructor responded back, well, I feel if we have marijuana be legal, we'll have to have all these other drugs be legal. Well, that's an example of the slippery slope. You know, how do we know when to stop? Well, when our consciousness says, stop. Red herring. A misleading statement or a statement made with the intent of distracting individuals from the topic in question. Politicians are often the best at using logical or rhetorical fallacies. And when I think of an example from a red herring, or of a red herring I should say, I think of the Democratic primary from 2016. And of course, the two major individuals in the 2016 Democratic primary were Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. And at a rally that Hillary Clinton gave, she mentioned how Bernie Sanders all of a sudden decided to become a Democrat. And there are people in the background booing her and whatnot, and she just kind of brushes them off and says, oh, it's true, it's true. Well, to the letter, it was true. But it was also a red herring for this reason. Bernie Sanders, of course, ran as a Democrat 
in 2016, and as I'm recording this, he's running as a Democrat now. And a major reason why he is is because in the United States, we are basically a two-party system, Democrat and Republican. And often at times, to win a major office, particularly the presidency, you pretty much have to run as one of those two major parties. Um, so while Sanders ran, you know, as a Democrat, and of course he previously, you know, would be identified as independent, um, he refers to himself as a Democratic Socialist, but if you look at where he is, politically speaking, he is essentially more on the Democratic side, even if he didn't actually have a D by his name. To perhaps look at it from another perspective, uh, one time when I was browsing around on YouTube, I happened to come across an interview of Bernie Sanders on Bill O'Reilly's show, and O'Reilly mentioned about him being a Democrat, and Sanders responded back, well, I'm not actually a Democrat, but then O'Reilly cut in and said, but you do caucus with them, right? To which Sanders um, responded, I do caucus with them. So that essentially, you know, makes you basically, in a sense, a Democrat, even though if you don't, you don't have a D by your name. To go at it from another perspective, you know, someone that I know, he would identify himself as a constitutionalist. But if he was ever elected, you know, to Congress, be it the House of Representatives or the Senate, he would be caucusing with the Republicans because that's where he leans more. So, you know, in the same type of interview, you know, if I was to refer to him as a Republican, he would, of course, respond back, well, I'm not actually a Republican, I'm a constitutionalist, but then I could then ask the question, but you do caucus with them, right? To which he would respond back, I do caucus with them, because that's where he would be more along the lines of. So, in some respects, they're kind of a Republican, even though there's no R by the said person's name. Another logical fallacy that's used often sometimes, the straw man. And the straw man is essentially responding to a question or a statement that does not address the attended question or statement made. And again, have to use a little bit of politics um, in explaining this particular fallacy. Going back, once again, to the 2016 Democratic primary, uh, Bernie Sanders was doing a campaign rally in California. And during the rally, he mentioned how individuals working at Disneyland were living in motels. Well, one of the higher-ups at Disney responded back on Twitter with a statement, something along the lines of, I created so many thousands of jobs last year. How many have you created? Well, that's an example of the straw man. Because what Bernie Sanders was getting at was not the issue of jobs being created, but compensation for said jobs. To explain that point, let me give an example. Let's say that I took you up to my grandparents' farm when we still had it, and I had you work that day at the farm. Regular eight-hour day, we'll say. So I gave you a job. 
And when it comes time to collect your pay, I give each one of you five dollars. Until you don't spend it all in one place. You know, again, did I give you a job? Yeah. Did I compensate you properly? No. And that was the point that Sanders was getting at. It wasn't the issue of jobs being created. It was compensation for said jobs. So the higher up in Disney did not respond back to the statement that was being made, or the intended statement being made, in this case, by Sanders. Either or... Either something must be this, or it must be that. Essentially, the either-or fallacy is stating that there's no possible gray areas. Either something must be this or it must be that. There can't be nothing in between. Now, there are times when this, in fact, is not a fallacy because there are situations where something can only be either this or that. Um, for example, if a woman makes the statement that she's a little bit pregnant, there is no such thing. Either she is or she is not. You know, I think of um, my introduction to philosophy course, and one of the topics as I'm recording this that we are looking into is the deterministic topic versus libertarian topic. Does free will exist or does it not? And one position is called compatibility, which states that free will does sometimes exist, but at the same time, it does not exist. It all depends on the situation. Well, the challenge to that is, based on the use of terms, free will must either exist or it must not. And someone could say, well, that's the either or because you're not allowing some between. Well, maybe this is a case where it's not. That maybe, you know, either it does exist, free will, or it doesn't. And... Arguments could be made either way on both sides very strongly that there can't be an in-between, that either we must have free will or we're all determined. It doesn't exist. It's nothing but an illusion. Well, we'll stop here, and then we will, of course, continue on with a little bit more of some logical rhetorical fallacies you know within ethics so take care i will symbolically see you then